Good morning, everyone. So uh, the assignment for today is to review on what was covered in the previous class. So this is the lesson plan that I've prepared for you all. Good morning, everyone. So uh, for today's assignment, we're going to review on the lesson covered in the previous class and to understand the various factors affecting the climate of India. So there are three objectives for you to work on today's class. Uh, the first objective is to describe uh, the first objective is to describe then what is the name given to the climate of India, which is a very important question. Uh, you must know the name that is given. The second is the important line of latitude, the Tropic of Cancer, and the significance. How does it affect our, the climate of our country? And the third are the various factors that affect the climate of our country. So these are the three objectives that we're going to learn in today's class. Now, before you proceed further, I would request all of you to have these three materials with you. The first is a textbook. If you have, well and good. If you don't have, please try to stay focused towards the end of the lesson. Uh, second is a notebook. This is mandatory. Everybody is requested to have something to write on and your writing resource, something to write with. So once you're ready with these three, then you may proceed forward with the videos. Now, what are you going to do with the, uh, the video is, basically, you are expected to watch the slides prepared for the lessons attached, also indulging in note-taking some of the important terms and questions. So once you play the video, once you begin watching the video, you're expected to have your notebook by the side and also indulge in taking notes of the important terms that you come across along with the important questions that we discussed. Now to quickly review on what we've covered so far, this is chapter four, Climate of India. This is one of the important chapter for part two. You get 10 mark questions solid from this chapter. Now, uh, if you remember, these are a few things that we had learned, so I'll quickly review on what was covered so far uh, so that it is convenient for you. Now, first thing we learned that the latitudinal and longitudinal extent of India. India lies between eight degree, four minutes north to 37 degree, Six minutes north latitude and 68 degrees 7 minutes east to 97 degree 25 degree 25 minutes east longitude so this is the latitudinal extent of India which is fast so we're going to learn how these latitudinal extent affects the climate of our country as well the second thing we learned about uh, the Tropic of Cancer Tropic of Cancer is a very important latitude because it divides the country into two parts uh, so how does it divide? It divides the northern half lies in the temperate, while the southern half lies in the tropical. So this is how the Tropic of Cancer divides a country. Now I'll just quickly proceed to the, uh, other, I'll skip on this paragraph and then move to the next. Now this is what the role of Tropic of Cancer. The northern part of India, temperate belt, okay. Uh, so this is the experience a continental type of climate, whereas because of Tropic of Cancer, the southern part would experience the tropical, meaning a moderate climate. So this is how the latitude that is Tropic of Cancer divides um, the temperature, the climate of our country. And moving back to so the name, what is the name given to the climate of India? Uh, you must remember the name given to climate of India is tropical monsoon type of climate. So if you ask question in your board, what is the name given to the climate of India? Please make sure you use both the term tropical monsoon. Now let us try to understand why we call it as tropical monsoon. Tropical because the southern part of India lies in the tropics and monsoon because monsoon is the major wind that influences the climate of our country. Hence the name tropical monsoon type of climate. So this is very important term. Please remember tropical monsoon type of climate. Now moving to the next. So we'll quickly uh, move uh, page number 86 if you have a textbook. Now here you see uh, that there are three water bodies that surround. Now if you look into the three water bodies, one is the Arabian Sea, you have the Indian Ocean and the Bay of Bengal. So these are the three water bodies that surround the country. Now second thing is that the important name given to a climate. The climate of India is known as the mirror of the climate of South Asia. Why? This could be a question. Now, if you look into the word mirror, try to focus on this word mirror. Mirror means a replica of something. So why are we called mirror of the climate of South Asia? Because our climate represents various features found in the entire South Asia. Because we, the, the climate of South Asia 
is exactly represented by the climatic conditions of a country. Hence, we call the climate of India also as the mirror climate of South Asia. And before we proceed further, if this is a map in the previous uh, slides, we learn how the Tropic of Cancer, if you look here, this is the Tropic of Cancer, dividing our country into two halves. In the north, it has experiencing a continental climate, meaning extreme, very hot, very cold, species like Delhi. In the south, they have a tropical climate, meaning they are moderate in nature for Goa, Mumbai. So these are some areas which experience a moderate influence because they are close to the sea. Now next, uh, we move on to the different factors. There are many factors responsible for the unique climate of our country. So the first factor, now if you look into the first factor, the first factor of writing the climate of India is the monsoon. Monsoon plays a very, very important role. Now let us try to understand what a monsoon. The monsoon winds are seasonal winds. This is a very important term you must know. Monsoon are seasonal meaning. These occur seasonally and they change the direction according to season. So that is why we name monsoon winds as seasonal in nature. The second thing is the direction. In what direction does the monsoon approach our country? Now, after crossing the equator, what do these winds do? The monsoon winds blow from southwest, southwest direction when they approach the Indian subcontinent. So because after crossing the equator, they blow from southwest, that is why monsoon winds are also known as southwest monsoon winds. Now let us try to have a look at the picture given above here to understand the direction. Now this is the monsoon wind and here is the equator. Now if you see after they cross the equator, what is happening to the direction? They are deflected to the right. Now what is this? This is something known as Coriolis force. If you remember, according to Coriolis force, what happens? All the winds which are moving to the northern hemisphere get deflected to the right. So when they get deflected to the right and the direction becomes southwest, this is how they approach our country. So this is the reason why monsoon winds are also known as southwest monsoon winds because they approach our country from the southwest direction. Now two things you need to remember for southwest monsoon. Southwest is your arrival of monsoon when the monsoon begins. Southwest monsoon has two branches. One is the Arabian Sea branch and one is your Bay of Bengal, meaning they enter our country from the Arabian Sea as well as the Bay of Bengal. I'll just quickly explain how they enter our Indian subcontinent. Now, as the monsoon gets deflected, after crossing the equator, they get deflected to the right. So this is how they get deflected. And when they get deflected, the direction becomes south west if you remember this is the arabian sea here is the arabian sea now this is the bay of bengal now this is the southwest monsoon which has two branch uh, first is they enter from the arabian sea along from the uh, along with the arabian sea they even take the bay of bengal route in entering us Indian subcontinent. So this is the southwest monsoon or the arrival of the Indian monsoon. Alright. Uh, so we'll try to see here. Uh, okay. So this is the southwest monsoon. This point is important. If you look into this paragraph, the southwest monsoon influences almost entire India. This is important because you often get questions, name the wind that brings maximum rainfall to the country and it is the southwest monsoon. So you must remember, southwest monsoon is the wind that provides maximum rainfall to the country. So that was southwest monsoon, the arrival of the Indian monsoon with two branches, one is the Arabian Sea and one is the Bay of Bengal. Now moving to the second monsoon, that is the winter monsoon, that is the northeast monsoon. Now northeast monsoon are experienced from the month December to February. Now what happens? What is the special role of this monsoon? They only have one branch. So what is the branch? They blow from northeastern part of South, uh, South Asia as offshore winds and pick up moisture over the Bay of Bengal. So the northeast monsoon will only have one branch that is the Bay of Bengal branch. So as you're trying to exit, leave our country because this is the retreating monsoon going back. So as they pick up moisture via Bay of Bengal, what do they do? 
these moisture laden rains what do they do they bring rainfall over the coromandel coast of tamil nadu during winter months and this is important because we often get a question name the wind that is responsible for bringing rainfall over the coromandel coast in tamil nadu in kerala uh, during winters if especially if it's during winter you must mention that it is a northeast monsoon so this are the, uh, these are your two uh, branches of monsoon the two directions one is your arrival that is your southwest uh, monsoon is the arrival with two branch uh, that is the arabian sea and bay of bengal and northeast is the going back or retreating monsoon when monsoon leaves our country and they only have one branch that is the bay of bengal as they leave what do they do as they leave our country what do they do as they exiting the country what are they doing here so as they leave the country so this is the northeast monsoon so as they are trying to exit a country this is the bay of bengal okay some branch picks up a moisture and this is the part which gets lot of rainfall they enter the indian subcontinent drop a lot of rainfall here on all this region coromandel coast and that is how they exit our indian subcontinent so this is the northeast monsoon when they leave they pick up moisture from bay of bengal touch the southern tip and then drop a lot of rainfall during which month during the winter months and leave our country so this is uh, how the northeast monsoon exits our country so that was the first uh, factor affecting the climate of india influence of the monsoon winds now second factor is the role of mountain ranges here we'll be basically talking about few relief features mountains the first are our himalayas now himalayas play a very very important role in affecting the climate of a country now let us try to understand what is the role played by the himalayas the first role played by the himalayas the first role played by the himalayas is what do they do they act as a barrier they act as a barrier they block all the cold winds the cold winds blowing from central asia gets blocked because of the himalayas so imagine if there are no himalayas all the cold winds all the way from central asia would enter our country and mostly the northern plains of india would freeze during the winter and the second role played by the himalayas is the monsoon winds that is the monsoon winds coming from the arabian sea and bay of bengal are obstructed by the himalayas so when the monsoon winds from bay of bengal and arabian sea are trying to approach further up towards the north the himalayas block its way and what do they do the himalayas allow the monsoon to drop maximum rainfall to the indian subcontinent rather than escaping out so that's the two important role you just have to remember the two role of the himalayas in affecting the climate of our country the second here are western ghats now what are western ghats these are mountains which are parallel to the western coast in the western coast you will see a chain of mountains which are parallel so, so these mountains when the southwest monsoon winds pick up a moisture they obstruct the southwest monsoon from coming from the arabian sea and maximum rainfall gets dropped to the western coast the which is a windward side and extreme in the next slide with the help of a diagram so that is the role played by western ghats in affecting the climate of our country now moving to the next uh, here in the western ghats you must know two things that is one is your term rain shadow if you look here you see a term rain shadow meaning rain shadow area is the area Uh, which receives very little or no rainfall so two terms you must know what is rain shadow is rain shadow meaning it is shadowing the rain so meaning a place a part of the mountain with very little rainfall and over here if you remember we learned about example given here mangalore and bengaluru now even though they are almost on the same latitude mangaluru uh, mangalore receives more rainfall than bengaluru why so this could be a question why these places even despite being on the same latitude one is receiving more one is receiving less rainfall so any time a place is receiving less more rainfall meaning it is always on the windward side all right so places which are always on the windward places which are on the windward side meaning more rainfall if you look at the word wind 
wind, you should always connect to the word wind. Wind meaning rain. The wind is the factor which picks up moisture, drops rainfall. So windward is that part which receives more rainfall, whereas rain shadow Where is in shadow or leeward meaning little or no rainfall. Okay, so that's the difference. So you might get a question like this. Two places being on the same latitude, one receiving more rainfall than the less. Always try to understand places which are receiving more rainfall, meaning they're always on the windward side. Less meaning they're always on the leeward side. So that's the two terms for you to remember. Uh, the next mountain here is the Purvanchal mountain. Purvanchal mountain meaning mountains to the east, the eastern end. So there are three mountains here in the eastern, that is your Garo, Khasi, and Jente. Now these three mountain ranges are in the form of a crescent. They are in the form of a crescent shape. So what do they do? They obstruct the Bay of Bengal branch. As the Bay of Bengal branch, a southwest monsoon, try to move up. Okay, what do they do? They obstruct this wind from moving to the other side. So these moisture winds are very heavy. They have picked a lot of moisture from Bay of Bengal. So they drop all the moisture to this side. So that is why places like Cherapunji, Mosanram, which records the highest amount of rainfall in the world because they lie on the windward side of Garo Khasi Hills. So that is the reason why Mosan Ram, this is the heaviest rainfall in the world. It's because it lies on the windward side of Garo Hills. So I'll quickly explain the different mountain ranges we just discussed. Uh, now, uh, the first we talked about was Western Ghats. Now, Western Ghats is in the western coastal here. So this, are your, this is how your western ghats are. Now when the southwest monsoon, when the southwest monsoon tries to approach from Arabian Sea, this is the Arabian Sea area, as the southwest monsoon tries to enter the Indian subcontinent, what do they do? These western ghats act as a blockage. So as they try to enter, what do they do? This part of western ghats receives a lot of rainfall because this is the windward side of Western Ghats. So the southwest monsoon would enter the Indian subcontinent, drop a lot of rainfall to this spot. And as they escape further, these areas receive, this is your leeward side, this is your leeward side, receives very little rainfall. So this side receives, this side of your Western Ghats receives very little rainfall. So that is about your Western Ghats. Uh, moving to the next, that is the role of your Himalayas. Now what do the Himalayas do? The Himalayas, just draw Himalayas. Himalayas now. Uh, 